Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to another episode of Shoots with Coops, and today I want to talk about is 28 the new 35. You know, a 28 millimeter lens is, you know, they're becoming a lot more popular. Um, is it the new 35 as far as you know street documentary environmental type? Uh, photography goes. So let's dive into that subject today. So for the longest time guys, from what I, whatever, as long as I can remember really on YouTube, uh, you know, reading this and that, whatever I've heard, you know, the go-to lens of choice for any street photographer, um, documentary photographer, photojournalist, is that they all seem to say, you know, 35 mil. The 35 mil lens seems to be what's always attached to everyone's cameras. Uh, and I, you know, was the same uh, earlier on this channel. You would have seen me, guys, uh, you know, with, with my Leicas, uh, you know, M6, M7, whatever it was, you know, rocking a 35mm, uh, whether it be a Zeiss, Leica, um, whatever it was, you know, I was rocking a 35mm lens on that camera. Likewise, with my digital cameras, you know, rocking a 35 on my Fuji cameras, uh, on my X Pro 2, on my X T3, uh, you know, even when I am out in the water shooting surf. Uh, in my housing, I'm rocking a, you know, a 35 millimeter equivalent lens. So I really thought, you know, it was time to try 28. For the longest time, I thought 28 was, you know, as, you know, as useful as a waterproof tea bag. Like, what's the point? You know, you might as well shoot 35. Uh, there's more 35 lenses out there. There's more variety. Uh, you know, there's less distortion on a 35 than a 28. Um, but, you know, I have seen a lot of people recently starting to make the shift. Uh, you know, just for instance, you know, the new Ricoh GR3, that's, you know, previously versions of the Ricoh as well, but you know, they're very, very highly regarded street cameras and they all have a fixed 28mm lens. So I finally decided to, I didn't want to get too out of hand to be honest, uh, for my, you know, you guys would have seen this bad boy on the channel before, my original film camera, my Nikon EL, I went and got one of the Nikon E-Series 28mm 2.8 lenses. Now if you remember the E-Series ones, the glass is good, but they're just built pretty average, you know what I mean? Like they're all plastic instead of metal like the other AIS lenses Nikon made from the era. But it was cheap. I think it cost me 140 Australian dollars, so convert that wherever you are. And I thought, you know what, I'll whack it on uh, my EL. It's not going to cost much money. You know, I'll grab a few rolls of Tri-X and I'll go out and shoot. And I was super, super surprised. I mean, one, the quality of this lens. It's pretty good. There's not much distortion um, when you stop down wide open. I didn't really shoot uh, too much wide op open because I was actually zone focusing quite a fair bit, even with an SLR. Um, but pretty impressed with the lens. But what actually blew my mind is when I got the images back and I was staring at the images. I you know, and I had to get close. I'll say that now. That is the one drawback of the 28 mil lens I found is you have to get close. Now I mean, you really need to get up in people's grill to, to get a, you know, to make a really good compelling shot with a 28 mil. But when I was looking, you know, at a lot of the photos when I got my scans back, to be honest, I was thinking to my, that's why I had had the idea for this video, because I was thinking to myself, like, I honestly, if I showed this photo to someone, I don't reckon even a good photographer could probably tell with some of the images, whether it was a 28 or a 35. Um, and I really, you know, and I was looking at the images and they all came back really well. And I'm going, you know, maybe there's something to this. Maybe the 28 really is the perfect street lens, documentary lens. And I've just been living under a rock or be too naive to even give it a shot all these years. So before we keep talking, guys, uh, jump onto the computer. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some of the shots that I've taken with this 28 mil, some street stuff. Um, enjoy. And then we can talk a bit about it, uh, a bit about of it after.
Now, pros and cons, guys. Now, the biggest con I'm going to say of the 28mm lens is you have to get close. You have to be really close to make a compelling shot or to have interesting subject matter most of the time. So if you're someone who's a little bit street shy, for a term, I suppose, if you're a bit street shy, it might not be the lens for you. You might not be comfortable getting that close, you know, getting right up into, into you know, your subject or, or what you want to, you know, create the certain look. You might be better off with the 35mm lens because you can just be that little bit further back and you don't have to intrude uh, on sometimes other people's personal space to create that image. One of the other cons I'll say about the 28mm lenses, guys, is they're not super fast. They are quite slow lenses. A lot of the vintage ones, uh, you know, the cheaper vintage ones you're going to find, like, you know, this Nikon here, uh, they're usually 3.5 or 2.8 um, at the widest aperture. So not super fast. You're going to find that the more expensive ones are sort of f2 and lower. They are going to be quite expensive. Um, and the other con I'll say with that is, you know, 28mm lenses that aren't very well made are going to have quite a lot of distortion and, you know, probably a heavy vignette, you know, obviously. So if you're trying to shoot a lot of straight lines, uh, you're going to see that curving effect at the bottom and the corners of the frame. Uh, so that is just something to be mindful of. But the pros of a 28mm lens, guys, and there are a couple, I think, uh, to balance the argument out. Uh, the biggest one I'm going to have to say for, you know, for street shooters is it is so much easier to zone focus with a 28mm lens. Uh, you know, the wider the lens, you generally find that the depth of field, you know, your, your zone focus scale that can be seen on especially most vintage lenses, it's got a much wider leeway um, because of the, you know, the distance. Because essentially with... I just so for instance with this this 28 mil um, 2 uh, 2.8 from Nikon, you should be able to see that with the you know the distance scale there. Once you hit two meters, the next marker is is infinity, as you can see there. So for instance, on a 50 millimeter lens or a 35 mil millimeter lens, you're going to have the that two meter mark, and then you're going to have a three meter and a five meter, and sometimes a 10 meter, and then infinity. You know what I mean? So I'm saying you can essentially, you know, stop down your lens to f11 or something like I can with this lens, and I can preset focus so that anything from one meter to infinity is going to be in focus. So that makes you, it gives you that really large, you know, focus range when you're on the street. So zone focusing, you know, quick shots without focusing, you know, instead of having to sit there, focus, compose, you can just whip the camera up, snap. Um, and I think that's one of the major reasons it lends itself to being such a fantastic street lens. Another con I'll say, guys, uh, you know, the environmental portrait, so to speak. You know, 28 being wider than 35, you can include a lot more in the frame. Uh, you can include more background subjects, if you like, buildings, more people. Um, but then you can also isolate certain subjects as well. Um, so it's pretty, pretty handy, to be perfectly honest, guys. I mean, like I said, I kind of wrote this lens off from the start, never having used it. Heard a lot of people just say, nuts, it's just not worth it. And never tried it myself. So it just goes to show that instead of just following the trends and listening to what everyone else has to say, give things a shot for yourself, guys. If you're interested in street photography, uh, if you like to get close and you want to try something different, if you haven't before, try and find yourselves you know, a vintage uh, 28mm lens to throw on your film camera or digital camera uh, and have a play around with it and see what sort of shots you cre can create. You might find yourself, you know, like me, being very surprised uh, at, you know, how close you can get, but, you know, how great the images uh, can turn out and how close it really is, you know, to 35 in the end. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Like, do you guys like the 28 or, did, you know, do you think it's useless? Um, have you never tried it? Let me know. Let's have a little chat down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.